Bye, everyone. Hey, Russ, how are you? I'm I'm okay. How are you doing? Good. So I'm I'm just getting someone extra into the Zoom room. Let's have a seat. Right. Um, okay. So, um, so today, right. Hi, everyone. Um, so, uh, yes. So last week, sorry. Remember, it's a book club. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Um, the the video that we're doing today, we're we're this is a book club working through the book. Probabilistic Machine Learning by Kevin Murphy, the, f the first of the two of those books. Um, the video for this will be posted on YouTube, um, and we're doing it as part of the data science learning community, um, for which you can find the, the, the Slack uh, channel details online. Um, if, if anyone watching this on YouTube wants to join us, it, or anyone from that community who stumbles over this in, on YouTube wants to join us in. We're in the book club PML channel. Um, today, we're doing the first section. Uh, we, sorry, we, we're, uh, last week, we did a kind of general introduction to the book and, and to machine learning in general. Um, today, we're going to be looking at linear discriminant analysis as much as we can cover in the space of an hour um and then we'll be doing a second um look at the chapter next week um when when hold on a second when derek solberger uh presents the um the, the second half of the, the chapter um so um i'm i'm leading today uh we're going to look at um quadratic discriminant analysis and, and linear discriminant analysis and um we'll look at some of the python code used by the author to um form linear discriminant analysis um i'll just share my screen if i can remember which one it is is it that one no is it the other one yes right okay um Right. So, um, so yeah, we've we've skipped seven chapters of the book. The seven chapters that we've skipped, uh, a, a lot of it's kind of um, the basics of probability um, and, um, and and of kind of statistical models and things. Um, all important stuff. Um, but I kind of wanted to get into the machine learning. stuff um hence we've skipped into part two of the book on linear models um so there are four chapters in this section on um lda that we're talking about today on logistic regression linear regression and the general linear model um so i'll do just uh pull the notes so if i've got a quarto presentation with some of the stuff from the book highlighted um right so the 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 purpose of this kind of model is for classification of a data set 
Um, so um, discriminant analysis is like, um, given this set of um, features about these in these data points, can we predict um, which of a finite set of um, classes each um, data point comes from? Um, so if you were, if you had, say, like the Palmer Penguins data set, you might take things like the beak dimensions, the wing dimensions, and things like that, and try and predict which species of penguin a given row of data corresponded to based on the measurements of that penguin, and, and similarly with iris data and, and things like that. Um, the examples we'll use in the 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 meeting um, are just going to be in two dimensions. So you'll have two measured variables, and we'll be trying to predict a class from that. But the the the, the class of models are, isn't constrained to two dimensions. Um, so this is a classification model um, where you're trying to predict. Well, you're trying to kind of determine the probability that a given um, uh, data point would be from class of, from a given class C, say, um, given its um, given its um, features, these measurements and things. Um, and the way that this type of model works, the 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 the, the model is presented in the chapter is that you build a kind of generative model for your data set. So a, a generative model is like a, a model that you, you could use to um, like sample new, um, a, a sample a new data set from if, if you so wanted. Um, there are other classifiers that are, uh, now this is going to be weird because we're talking about linear discriminant analysis throughout um, the, the, the presentation uh, is referring to them as a, a, a generative model but um, that word discriminative there are also discriminative classifiers that, that don't build a um, a a, a a generative model. So like um, tree-based models wouldn't necessarily be able to build a exemplar data point. Anyway, so um, what you're trying to do here is estimate um, a, a probability model um, that allows you to um, predict uh, the, 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 the class that a particular data point came from. You do that by here, we've got um, X being the observed features, theta, a bunch of parameters, and um, Y here is the, um, the, the class that you're trying to predict. And this is a kind of a, a fairly standard use of Bayes rule. Um, so if we knew the class that a particular example had come from, uh, so if we knew kind of what, what class something could, had come from, we could predict the, we could kind of give the probability of, um, seeing a, a kind of observed set of features um, given a, 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 the, the parameters in this model. Um, but uh, while we're actually building and kind of um, um, estimating the, um, the, the best model for this kind of task, um, 
we don't typically know those things. So we kind of, we, we build a thing. And uh, uh, anyway, so, so the, the kind of typical example is you, well, excuse me, I've gone too far. I've got two here. Right. So you might have a data set that looks like this, where you've got two measured variables and three classes of, um, of, 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 um, examples. So you've got a red, a blue, and a green class. And we can see in this top right corner where both the X and the Y value are la uh, uh, large positive numbers, you're typically getting red um, class elements. Down in the bottom left, you're getting blue elements. And up in the top left, you're getting green elements. So what happens in a, in in the the generative model is you try and fit for the red class a a, um, a a kind of a probability model that best fits that data for the blue class a kind of probability model that best fits the data for that class and for the green you you do it similarly so um there's a, an example of fitting a um a Gaussian distribution for each of those classes independently here. Um, now, that's fine, but that's that's the that that's fitting a model where we already know the um, the class of a. Um, of, a, of an element. Um, when we get an unlabeled element and we're trying to predict where it might come from, quite reasonably, you might get a blue element up here on the border with the reds. You might get a, a red element over here somewhere in the greens. We have to um, be able to use the models that we've fitted to these separate classes in a way that we can kind of predict which class um, one, a, a, a newly observed element has come from. And we do that by weighting the, um, the, the probability models by the, the kind of observed probability of coming from one of those classes. Um, the linear discriminant analysis um ultimately the 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 stuff in the the first part of this chapter builds up to building a uh a probability model where the posterior where the the, the probability of coming from a particular class is kind of linear in the feature set um and we'll talk about how that happens right so the first section is slightly more general view of of discriminant analysis than than linear discriminant analysis um and what we do is for each class in our data set we build a gaussian model where there's a so for each class you've got a mean and you've got a covariance matrix for each class too. There's no, um, uh, there needn't be a connection between the means of the different classes or between the covariances of the different classes. And that's why in this example here, where you've done, where we've done, uh, where we fitted a Gaussian to each of the classes individually, you can see that the, the covariances are, a different you've got a kind of um um a kind of diagonal for the blue you've got a, a kind of circle for the reds if you look at the the, the kind of um the uh, the the curves in the in the so yeah, so these three uh, classes have different covariance models when fitted by a Gaussian discriminant analysis. 
this here is the kind of uh, what was the term? Where did it go? Where did my notes go? That's funny. Is the um, class conditional? Ah, yeah, the class conditional density. So that's this thing here. Given we knew the class, this is the the, the kind of probability model for um, um, the 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 features you'd expect. Um, so with that, we can um, build a, a the, the the kind of posterior for for um, for a for the model and from that we can predict for for newly observed uh values what we need is the kind of prior probability of coming from a given class and that fitted probability model the the class conditional um okay um one thing that's kind of in um highlighted in the book is that these uh, gaussian models um the gaussian discriminant thing leads to quadratic decision boundaries so if you look here the black lines in this curve actually have got a better um view of the same thing uh where is it here There. So the 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 boundaries here are the points where so this boundary here is a kind of points where your if you observe those features on that boundary, it's equally likely that the um the the data point that you're you're looking at has come from this green class as that it's come from this blue class okay um and similarly this boundary here is um where it's sort of equally probable that you might be from the green class or the red class and um because this model was fit by the gaussian discriminant analysis there's um curves to the decision boundaries they are um quadratic in uh in nature um and the reason for that where are my notes um we have with um that so this is the posterior probability what the log of it um, of coming from a particular class, um, given that model. And there's a term here that's quadratic in the features X. Um, so because each class has its own covariance matrix, um, you can't really cancel out those separate covariance matrices. Um, so what have we got here? The log of the posterior is this blah 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 plus something that i've not shown um so if we've got two different classes c and c prime and we set the posterior probability of coming from each of those classes equal um then after a bit of kind of cancelling out and stuff like that you end up with terms that look like this and the, this is kind of what defines the decision boundaries. So this quadratic term in X with this covariance matrix and this quadratic term in X define the decision boundaries. And once you've got, I mean, these are kind of parameters of the model, the covariance matrices for the different classes and the prior probabilities for the different classes. So, um, after you fit the model, this is basically like two a, a difference of two quadratic terms equal to a constant. So you've got kind of curved decision boundaries between things. 
Um, right. Um, so the decision boundary is R quadratic. Let's go to this workbook. So this um, workbook here, um, we talked about this last week. Um, the um, Now, where is it? Uh, if I go to here, thank you. Maybe it's something else. I'll just copy it away. Uh, yeah, the the code to make all the figures in this book is available online. Um, so the, this uh, Pi Bob ML repository contains all the notebooks used. They're all like Jupyter notebooks. So we're looking at this one here, the this Grim Analysis Deep Boundaries thing. Um, and you can open them up in either in GitHub or in Google Colab. I just downloaded the thing and um, opened it up in Jupyter on my computer. Um, so we're going to use the scikit-learn tools for discriminant analysis. Um, so what have we got? Linear discriminant analysis. We've also got quadratic discriminant analysis and some pre-processing tools. Um, right, so if I go down here, this is just the code where they've sampled some data um, um, if I run each of the, what is it, shift and enter, isn't it? Okay, and then if I insert a cell, where is it now? We insert below. Is that one? So if we have a look at X, it's um it's just an array with you know two columns. Um so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all these data points and some associated labels as to whether they're from the green, red, or blue class, and pass them into scikit-learn, fit a linear, well, sorry, currently we're going to fit a quadratic discriminant analysis model to them, and then look at the decision boundaries and things. Um, so the figure we've got here just shows a, a kind of scatter plot of the different things. And the um, the um, kind of uh, contours of kind of equal um, density. I don't know exactly how you describe that in statistical terms. Um, anyway, um, right. So we've got that. Um, the I'll show you the code that's actually involved in it in a bit. But um, here, this is fitting. So that's fitting the QDA um, object created here um, comes from scikit-learn. Um, so uh, scikit-learn, if I look for... Um, this is um, an object for fitting um, exactly the kind of model that we're talking about here. Um, and what we've we done, we've passed that and um, the we've fitted the, how does it work, estimates and series. Right, so, da 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 da, so you'll have to predict. So 
So this is the model um, object that's been passed into this function. And we're just doing, so that's the equivalent of calling qda.fit on the data provided. Um, right. And with that, with the, the function that the author's written, he can extract the, the kind of decision boundaries from it. Um, and they're curves. Um, I don't mean to lay the point. Anyway, um, where were we? Um, here, right. Okay. Now, we can make a more kind of constrained model where rather than um, allowing the covariance matrices to vary between the classes, we have the it such that they're identical between the classes. So rather than fitting three covariance matrices, you're fitting a single one that's applicable across each class. Um, right. And um, what happens then is the the posterior probability for um, kind of um, for uh, the different classes uh, has this form basically. So it's some quadratic in X. Um, plus some constants. Um, well, actually, it's 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 a lot simpler than that, really, because the x the the, the features here um, can be um, is basically a, a a constant. Well, sorry, um, is that the right choice of words? Given a value of x. Um, the um the 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 specific class that uh, something's come from um uh, doesn't enter into this covariance matrix anymore so that kind of becomes a uh, a constant um determined by the features um so that that is the the class label has no impact on this term here. It would be the same for any of the three classes in this uh, figure. Um, so the um, yeah, the, the log probability, the, the log posterior, is just a, a kind of ba based on the prior probability of coming from a class plus a linear term. Uh, sorry, not that bit. A linear term in the features x. Um, so the 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 kind of posterior kind of looks like this, um, which is, I mean, I mean it's a little, a little bit simpler to 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 work with, um, but a uh, a consequence of that. Um, the consequence of that is that the decision boundaries are now linear. So if I, um, yeah, so we've got the posterior here. Yeah, the decision boundaries occur when this kind of posterior thing here, if we can equate that between the two classes, we end up with um something linear in the features depending on like one of the something that's a constant once you've given the parameters um and as such the the decision boundaries here are linear when you fit using that linear discriminant analysis so the lda and the qda objects in in scikit learn um there's the actual object. Maybe I missed it when I object 
here. Um, so we've imported this object into the workbook as we've imported that as QDA. So where I passed in QDA here, and it was in its fit method was used against the the values passed in. Um, it was this. Um, it was an object of this class that we were, were working with in inside that function, um, and the two objects, the the quadratic and the linear discriminant and analysis in scikit-learn have where are you now where are your methods stored um yeah uh the way that it works to use those things say you've got a numpy array of features and a numpy array of classes um once you've built yourself one of these model fitting objects you just call the fit method on the features and the, the labels. Um, and then on that fitted value, you can kind of, sorry, and then you can subsequently do things like predicting on newly observed data as well. Um, yeah, so here's an example where they've kind of passed in a new set of values for prediction. Uh, okay, so uh, yes, sorry, I was showing the quadratic discriminant analysis, but the LDA has the same kind of, um, what would you call it, signatures. So again, you call dot fit on it, and you can use dot predict to predict from a new range of things. Right, um, so that's tied covariance. Um, and the the discrimin decision boundaries between them are, are kind of linear. Now, where were we? Okay, so there's more. There's lots more to do in in the book. Um, so um, earlier in the book, even though we didn't cover it, um, there there was a discussion of logistic regression. Um, and the author kind of pulls out a connection between um, LDA and, and lo logistic regression in, in this section, which is quite interesting, whereby, so you have the the posterior here, if, because the log posterior has this form in linear discriminant analysis, the uh, posterior has this form, um and where is it? So if we there's an example where he's showing how that relates in the kind of binary case where you've got just two classes, y equals one and y equals zero, I guess. Um and the posterior reduces down to the calling the um sigmoid function on a linear um combination of the features and some constant um anyway right um okay so that's um there is i mean there's quite a lot more in the chapter but my ability to explain the theory is <laughs> kind of waiting to be honest if anyone wants to jump in and 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 say anything about this um uh feel free to um so yeah so the workbook um there's another workbook in the chapter um yes so um so I was looking at so what's what's actually happening in the discriminant analysis um is 
that you're you kind of fit the models for the individual classes in a way separate from each other and then combine those separate models together and you're able to hold on sorry i'm being um just a second i'll, I'll probably just be a minute um Sorry about that. I've got a five-year-old and um, she needs five-year-old things doing for her. Um, uh, so I'm going to leave the video off for a minute just in case she comes in with no knickers on. Um, right. Um, <laughs> right. Uh, okay. So, sorry, I've not been looking at the chat. Um, have there been any questions or anything? No. Um, okay. So, um, yeah, so the purpose of this kind of model is to build a kind of generative way of um of of building a, a, a so you're kind of um fitting a kind of model that would be able to generate new examples from uh, of of different classes and you know the the the, the values for the features that that you might have. expect for them um there's um uh what, what am i trying to explain um so does the right sorry i think i'm needed again i'll just be a second Right. Um, okay. <laughs> Sorry for the interval, uh, but these things are important. Um, right. Uh, uh, okay. That might well get that. Uh, my daughter's um, uh, joining us might get edited out of the actual video. Um, right. So, um, so what was I trying to say? So these models are generative. Now, we can in in, in Scikit Learn we can use fit to build the model we can use predict to um you know given new data to predict um the which class it might have come from um now does predict actually return predict yeah predict just returns one class um We can also get the all the vector of probabilities across the different classes. Um, now, are we able to um, to sample from the fitted model it doesn't I, I i can't actually see a um 
um, method that that does that, but presumably you could just pull out the um, fitted parameters and sample from it yourself. Um, yes, yeah, so it seems a little bit strange that, that you'd you'd be able to build a generative model in scikit-learn, but not actually use it as a generative model trivially. Um, but anyway. Right. Um, uh, yeah, anyway, um, if any if anyone has any questions, I, I haven't actually used the scikit-learn uh, discriminant analysis stuff before. Um, and um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I probably wouldn't have written the code the same way that the author's done here. Um, so what they've done is, um, let's see, I'll have to predict access. Um, right. Okay. So he's pulling out the uh where are we a, a so these are he's fitting the model then um predicting um for each um input each pair of like input values um the uh, the class that it would have come from according to the model um then um extracting the kind of posterior probabilities and the, a prediction for each um then how does he do it contours must just take the um mus and sigmas the fitted values and put them over the top i don't think it can be done trivially in scikit learn without writing your own functions um but yeah um but i don't know i mean uh the the model itself seems quite straightforward to do. The example we've gone through is, I mean, we're, we're just looking at like a couple of uh, features that, that in, in here be, because it makes it easier to look at in um, scatter plots and whatever. But the, the models themselves can extend to many more, um, many more um, features. Um, a, a value of linear discriminant analysis is be, because you're only fitting a single covariance matrix um, your estimates for that covariance matrix are a bit better however they may be less appropriate on a class by class level but um, anyway yeah the the floor's open for discussion. It's it. Uh, I, I'm sure you will have used models akin to this in the past, if you're working as a statistician or data scientist or something. Has anyone used the scikit-learn um, objects for for discrimination in this, in this way? Oh, where's the chat gone? No one. Okay. Ah. Okay. Uh, yeah. No. Th uh, thanks for coming along, Heidi. Um, right. Um, okay. Jared, Aida, David. Yeah, I, I haven't used it. I haven't used it before. That's that's why I joined this this meeting. Yeah. Uh, it was very interesting to to see the application. And uh, yeah, definitely it's something that I should explore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm well, it, I find it I find it funny because I've I've done so much programming in Python and so little of it in it, as a data science 
you know, so little of it using things like NumPy and scikit-learn and stuff that um, a lot of a lot of this is like me learning from, <laughs> from scratch how to do the the simple models in a, a different language, even though it's a language you're quite I'm quite fluent with um, for other purposes, but um, yeah. So um, I know Aida that you use R quite a bit, but David and Jared, are you using Python for data work? I'm not. I do most of my data work is tabular, so I've just been using R. Um, I will. Right. I'm looking forward to trying this, but boy, this was much more math heavy than I was expecting. <laughs> well, the book itself is is pretty math heavy. I found I found yeah. it a little bit um, uh, quick it, it, how it went through a lot of the derivations. But I've got a few books on the same kind of topics. But um, yeah, uh, I I really haven't gone into much of the chapter really um next time we'll be talking about uh using naive bays classifiers and the differences between generative and discriminative is that it? yes and discriminative classifiers but um yeah i kind of i'm quite keen to emphasize the um the tooling rather than the maths um in the book club because i think it's a bit more like um usable a bit more practical for people and also i uh, less likely to make mistakes with the programming <laughs> than with the maths um uh yes so in r to do the same kind of things um the uh, discriminant analysis would be done using, would it be using the, the LM and GLM type tooling or would it be a machine learning library built on top of them? I think there is pack packages are also based be basis functions as well. Right, basic okay. functions yeah. so because i have followed this other book introduction to statistical Le learning and mm. they they have introduced lda for classification and okay. uh, but i'm not sure if if the the, the examples they are introduced into a package or just just functions from from base yeah. r sure i mean they'll they'll almost certainly be be, be present in some package I, I just don't know what the um the go to implementation is nowadays presumably in recipes or something like that that we are yeah um bunch of discriminant tools right anyway thanks everyone for coming along uh next week we do have a volunteer for next week's talk um derek didn't come to today's presentation though um but i'll i'll send him a message to check if he's coming along the following week, there'll be um, logistic regression. And the chapter, again, lots of equations. But um, um, yeah, there's so for each of these uh, figures, we've got um, notebooks that will explain how to kind of you build the 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 kind of models that are presented. Um, anyway, so that's the logistic regression will be in two weeks' time. Um, we'll do a bit more on linear discriminants next week. Cool. Anyway, thanks everyone for coming along. Um, hopefully, it's been useful. I I know that um, I can't remember David or Jared. You said that you'd been you'd attended book clubs before. Is that right? Yeah, the tidy models one when they first did it. Good stuff. Right. Anyway, thanks everyone. <laughs> I'll see you next uh, time. Um, Thank you, Russ. See yeah. you. See ya. Bye. Thank Bye. you. All right. Thanks, Russ. Bye, everyone. Oh, sorry, Sohan. I didn't.